Madam President, I'm honored to be back in the Council after heading Indonesia's third UPR in 2017. Madam President, the state of human rights across the world is in a challenging state. Instability and conflict have given rise to a variety of abuses of human rights, leading to suffering, dire poverty, social deprivation, and massive displacement. In Palestine, basic human rights and fundamental freedoms continues to be denied. Support for Palestinian freedom must never cease. Indonesia will always support Palestine in their fight to get their rights. Madam President, the retreat in many advanced democracy for short-sighted political interests has undermined inclusivity, tolerance, and respect, which are fundamental values of human rights. Meanwhile, multilateral commitment to promote human rights principles, including in the Human Rights Council, are taking a back seat, weakening global partnership and deepening mistrust. Against this breakthrough, all nations, with no exception, must rise to the challenge and contribute to make a better global human rights condition. It is a constitutional mandate for Indonesia to contribute in creating a world order based on freedom, lasting peace, and social justice. In this regard, I'm honored to present to you Indonesia candidature to the UN Human Rights for the period of 2020-2022. As one of the founding members of the Council, Indonesia will continue its active contribution in line with UNGA Resolution 60251. Indonesia will continue to bring new activism, synergy, and energy for global human rights effort. Allow me to highlight three points on how to re-energize our common pursuit of promoting and protecting human rights. First, Human Rights Council must reaffirm itself as the main and trusted platform to address human rights issues. The Council must work in an impartial, objective, and non-politicized manner. Politicization, double standard, Selectivity hamper efforts to address human rights issues effectively. It is therefore imperative to strengthen the Council mechanism to allow addressing human rights challenges in a unifying, efficient, and effective manner. Second, regional cooperation and mechanism of human rights must be strengthened. They must be first to respond in addressing human rights situation. We are responsible to ensure regional mechanisms work effectively and efficiently. In Southeast Asia, ASEAN and countries in the region are at the forefront in safeguarding human rights. On the situation in Rakhine State, for example, from early on, Indonesia took concrete action to help address the human rights situation, the humanitarian situation. Indonesia is actively engaging Myanmar, Bangladesh, ASEAN members, and other countries to help find a long-term, dignified, and lasting solution. ASEAN has also spared no effort in assisting the preparation on voluntary repatriation of Rakhine refugees. In a broader context, Indonesia continues to strengthen regional engagement to promote democratic and human rights values, including through the Bali Democracy Forum. The establishment of the Tunisia and Berlin chapter of Bali Democracy Forum demonstrates that sharing of human rights values and experiences is not a one-way street. The developing world can also share their experiences with the developed countries. Third, constructive and effective engagement between the government, national human rights institutions, and civil society must be strengthened. 
national human rights institutions and civil society play an important role. We must enhance investment in civic inclusive engagement for more meaningful and wider participation in the human rights work. Madam President, Indonesia believes that the promotion and protection of human rights begins at home. No country, and I repeat, no country has a perfect human rights record. Nevertheless, this should not deter us from advancing human rights agenda. As the third largest democracy with diverse population, Indonesia strongly committed in promoting and protecting human rights, as well as strengthening human development all across the archipelago. Indonesia is entering the fifth phase of our national action plan on human rights. Human rights continues to be mainstream through our Human Rights Cities Initiative in 409 cities and municipalities. Finally, Madam President, allow me to reiterate Indonesia's commitment to work with you and all members of the Council as a true partner for democracy, development, and social justice. We seek your support toward our candidacy. I thank you very much, Madam President.